did create you with a desire to be with your soulmate. Many of you have a desire to be with your soulmate because of neediness. And I can totally connect with that because that was my problem. And, uh, and if you have a desire to connect because of neediness, then, then obviously that is an error-based emotion within yourself that you'll need to release. Because it's not about that. And you know how most of you feel sexual attraction to different people, right? So you might be going along merrily anyway, and then all of a sudden just one person just stands out to you and you feel this sexual attraction. Well, that's not a soulmate attraction. But they could be your soulmate. Uh, it's probably highly unlikely. Um, the reason why <laughs> is, uh, there's a number of reasons why. I don't know what, if you understand what happens at the chakra level of your spirit body when you have emotional injuries. But what happens is you have certain energy, energy enters your spirit form and, and keeps your material form going through the universe. And the chakra points, which are the energy meridians of your spirit form, which are controlled by the emotions in your soul, control how much energy enters different chakra points. So you know how you have your seven <coughs> primary chakra points, and there's literally hundreds of points all over your body, but the seven primary ones. If you can imagine, if I have an emotion of unworthiness, then I have this emotion here in the second chakra point quite in infected with this unworthiness. And so I'll be trying to draw energy in, in this chakra point, from others. Does that make sense? Well, I've got that emotion of unworthiness. Now, that's very much, the second chakra is also very much connected to sexual identity. So, if there's energy flowing into the chakra point, I'm also going to feel horny. You follow me? So, I'm walking around like this, with this emotional injury. I'm not walking around horny. I'm just... Anyway, so what happens is I walk up to somebody and that other person is willing to actually satisfy this feeling of emotional injury that I have of unworthiness by trying to make me feel worthy. Right? Which will be based on their emotional injury of wanting to, you know, you know, nurture someone, mother someone, whatever, right? And particularly if it's want to mother them, it's going to come probably from their second chakra. So, so here I am. I've got this second chakra injury with no, not much energy flowing until it goes around and I meet that person. Wow, you know, there's there's some second chakra flowing energy flowing between the two of us now. You follow me? Yeah. And so you know what's going to happen? I'm going to feel horny. <laughs> I'm going to feel sexually attracted to this person. And it's got nothing to do with my pristine soul state. It's got everything to do with the injury yeah. being satisfied in, in energetically from an emotion. When that second chakra is flowing effectively, what state does that then develop? Is it like a, a, a peaceful <coughs> of some type? Yeah, you get to a point where you do not need you don't need any sexual desire and you'll instantly recognise who your soulmate is, not because of any sexual desire. So is that similar to the ideal of tantric sex as in developing that as an expression of energy as opposed to uh, physical oh geez, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> tantric sex is not an expression of anarchy. T tantric sex? You, did you say an expression of anarchy? No, uh, an energy. expression of energy, energy. as in like energy is flowing. <laughs> right? I knew what I thought about it. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> I just got it wrong. Um, so, a, a tantric, a tantric sex um, is certainly an expression of energy, and it's about opening up all of the chakra points while you're making love with somebody, right? And, and certainly, when you're with your soulmate and you've cleared away all emotional damage, all sex will be tantric. Right, um, and that, and you, you also need to understand that every time you enter a relationship, you create a third being, in a way, because you're creating that. It might not be with your soulmate, but it's with somebody, and you're creating this third entity, if you like, which is an amalgamation of the two entities, and it's an amalgamation of the two of your emotional condition, whether they be injury based or pure. Just, it doesn't matter which one does it. It's going to in. The, now, the problem is with attraction, is that the attraction, if I've got emotional injuries, is going to be all based on whether our emotional injuries are compatible. 
And do I want it to be that way? Really? Don't I want it to all be based on purity and it actually be my soulmate? Right? So that's an important thing to bear in mind. Now, as you work through your emotional injuries and you work through the issues of masculinity and femininity in particular, you will get to a point where you attract your soulmate automatically into your life. And just last week I was talking with a lady and, and, uh, and she's going through this terrible up, emotional upheaval at the moment. She met her soulmate for the first time. She's, I think she's in her 50s. And she met her soulmate for the very first time uh, a few weeks ago. And since then she's been crying every day. <laughs> He's rejected her. And she, he doesn't even know who she is, in fact. Uh, and the reason why she's been crying every day is because the moment you meet your soulmate, if you have unresolved emotional injuries you're going to get them triggered full on. So it's not going to be a smooth relationship. It's actually going to be quite a tumultuous one unless the both of you are willing to deal with your emotions fully, fully choose your emotions. Does that mean if we've had a fairly smooth relationship, we're not with <laughs> <laughs> No, it doesn't mean that. The majority of people on earth do meet their soulmates. And in fact, the majority of, a lot of people on earth do marry their soulmates. And it's just that they don't, are not yet aware of the soulmate relationship and their injuries were compatible enough to attract each other. You follow me? So even though they are in a relationship, it doesn't mean they're in a soulmate relationship yet. They're only going to be in a soulmate relationship once they've both worked through their injuries. Yeah. That's when the true relationship begins. So a lot of spirits say when they pass, they say, I now know you're my soulmate to, a, to their partner who was on the earth who they lived with for 40 years. Mm-hmm. right? And in fact, this happened to Paget, uh, James Paget, who we channeled through. He, he, he had, had a partner, soul, a soulmate, whose soulmate he married. He didn't know until she passed. And she started realising when she passed that he, she was his soulmate and that she loved him more than what she realised love was available to her on earth. And it's about entering that relationship. So don't think that because you're sexually attracted to somebody that it means you're soulmates. And in fact, if you recognise injuries within yourself, there's a pretty good chance you're not soulmates, you're injury mates. (laughs) 